I'm absolutely intrigued about what I'm about to see because I've been sent down this track across the fields and through the woods to look for a small space structure that I've been told you'd expect to see in a fairy tale. It's a gingerbread house. Look at that. This tiny guest house in East Sussex is owned and designed by Sarah Broadbent. Do you miss you, Sarah? Hi. Hi. Nice to meet How you. How are you? Good, thank you. You can't get more cute and idyllic than that, can you? No, I don't think so. We think it's a bit special. If that door was round, you'd just expect Bilbo Baggins to come walking out <laughs> of the door at you. It's so hobbit-like, it's fab. Well, I won't show you my hairy feet, then. <laughs> <laughs> that is so lovely. Thank you. The house is just 140 square feet and cost around £20,000 to build. Shall we go inside and have a look? Yeah, absolutely. Want to lead the way? I can't wait to see this one. Come on in. Oh, word. How cute is that? Well, you've even got a squeaky door as well. Absolutely. Just to add to the character of the space. What I want to know is, which fairy tale did you have in mind when you thought of this? Come on. Well, I think probably Hansel and Gretel. It's got to be, hasn't it? It has to be. Right? It is gingerbread. Yeah. Through and through. Sarah rents the gingerbread house out for £100 a night. I think there are 12 different sorts of, of wood that we've, we've incorporated into the build, and they're all reclaimed or local or... That's brilliant. Reused. So how does it work? I mean, obviously, parents here, parents I Parents here, usually, although sometimes the, the kids call dibs on the double bed and, and, the, and the parents, parents are in the there. bunks. Yeah, yeah. And, and where's the kind of the loo and the shower and all Aha. that stuff? Well, they're kind of en suite with a twist. It's <laughs> an outdoor en suite, <laughs> is that what you're saying? An outdoor en suite, yes. Everything's off grid, so it's a compost loo. Out um, there, yeah. I can see it. And we've invented our very own um, wood-fired shower, which actually sits on a chassis so that it can, if we wanted to, we could clear everything from the site and you'd never know anything was here. You just move it away. Exactly, so it was all about a minimal footprint on the land. It's great. And this is actually really efficient, isn't it? I yeah, mean, I think so. Yeah, you've got storage space here, mm -hmm. you've got cupboards. Oh, my yep. little spy. Oh, a little wardrobe in there. Yeah. Oh, my God, even the hanging rail is a piece of poles. wood. It's chestnut. And the um, curtain rails as, as well. That's fantastic. Yep. Of course. <laughs> So obvious now when you point it out, you just think, why not? Had That's perfect done. for yeah. it, isn't it? But you've got a decent sized butler sink, you've got a little hob, you've got everything storage All the underneath. Kit. Yeah. It is brilliant, completely self contained, completely off grid. Absolutely. But that wood burning stove is absolutely belting out there. Yeah, heat. it's really efficient. It's, even, it's even too hot in here. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievably hot. We have insulated it to within an inch of its life to make sure that people stay nice and cosy. How does this work? How does all so this... So the seat bench is by day, yeah. um, and then the, the bedding for each bunk is stowed underneath. Right, And perfect. you just convert them to beds at night. And at night time, this table can flip up and fold away, so you get a little bit of extra space. That's genius. The door itself was one whole piece of old oak, hand cleft, which was important to us again. Because it looks medieval and that's yeah. what we like about it. What I love about it is that we've had years, probably the last 15 years of kind of modern design, clean lines, minimalism, you know yep. what I mean? Yep. Nothing reused or recycled in any way. This is the complete polar opposite of all of that. And it's so homely and so beautiful and so romantic. Every kid in the world would want to be in something like this, wouldn't they? I think so. In Henley on Thames, Tim Brassy and his 22-year-old daughter Flo share a big passion in life, music festivals. We've done Glass and Brave Festival for the last dozen years or so. So, I mean, you, how, old were you, were you, how old were you when you first I came? I was tiny when I first came, probably about 11. Previous family trips to Glastonbury were taken in Tim's tricked-out hotel divan his homemade answer to the mobile home. And where do you sleep? Oh, there's a bed that folds out. But he's decided, with a little nudge from door to floor, that the time has come for an upgrade. And so Tim bought this. A classic American school bus all the way from New York State, as you do. With just six months until the next Glastonbury, Tim and Flo began restoration work. Uh, let's go with straight. It is straight. 
with the hope of turning this humble school bus into a luxury festival camper. But they couldn't even agree on basic design choices. If I wasn't here, my dad would be creating something that he thinks is really cool, but actually, it's not. So, a compromise was reached. Flo would take on all furnishings, while Tim let his imagination run free with the fittings. Today we're going to steam bend a U-shaped seat, and it's going to hook up into the emergency hatch. Today, I'm back in Oxfordshire, and I can't wait to see what this father and daughter team have achieved. So good to see you, Flo. Nice to see you. Come here. Thank you. You must be thrilled. Yeah. Obviously, the, the standard of your, your build this time seems to have gone to another level. Yeah, it's a bit say. better than Hotel Duvan, yes. <laughs> yeah. Flo, what do you think? <laughs> I'm so much happier. In a bid to persuade Flo to join him for future festival trips, Tim set out to deliver a camping experience with all the home comforts. So you've got some power. Yes. Oh, what's that one? That's the shower. The shower, does it work? Yes. Does it? Yeah. How does it work? Shower hose, that yes. just plugs in. And then you go... It's Hot. not quite a power shower, but... <laughs> get over that. So, Ford, does this satisfy your ModCon needs? It's ideal for... The bus. Is the inside as good as the outside? Oh, you have to have a, have a look. Come, they go. When the bus first arrived in the UK, it was a far cry from a luxury camper van. Oh, that's great. That is lovely. Really lovely. Since then, Tim and Flo have ingeniously repurposed this beast of a bus into a high school hunk of mobile luxury. With seating for six and comfortable sleeping for four, the bus also has a modern kitchen and dining facilities, a state-of-the-art light and sound system, and even a central heating unit. Got one more surprise. One more surprise? What have you done? What size? The uh, escape hatch. Tim put his skills to the test by steam bending a timber frame, which attaches to the inside of the emergency roof hatch using seat belts. This is the most unusual chair I've ever seen. I can't actually believe that I'm going to say this, but I think I need to try it out. Go on. <laughs> Ooh. Now that is incredible. It's mad. It's crazy. But I can understand why you've done it, because you get the most fantastic view everywhere. It's probably one of the weirdest things that I've ever experienced on Amazing Spaces, just so you know. I'm just putting that out there. Across this series, we've seen how an amazing space on Britain's waterways can be life-changing, as one woman in Staffordshire set out to prove when she left the London rat race for a far calmer pace of life. Hi. Sarah, how are you? I'm good, thanks. So nice to meet you. You too. This is a thing of beauty. Thank you. This is the book badge. Why did you buy a barge? I was working as an entertainment reporter, which is a yeah, euphemism for paparazzi. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, okay. And just kind of had enough. It was really full on, long hours, fancied a change. And it also tapped into some like romantic dream that I'd had of like just being able to sail away when I wanted. And... Take your shop anywhere yeah. you like. To fulfill her dream of opening a bookshop and living on water, Sarah splashed out £25,000 on this 60-foot second-hand narrowboat. Cruising the UK's 2,000 miles of canals requires a permit, insurance and a boat MOT, but no driver's licence. So when you were learning to drive this thing, mm -hmm. what was your worst mistake or crash? This has been through the wars. I flooded it, I got stuck in a lock and didn't really know what I was doing and water was pouring in. And... Yeah, it's all... <laughs> so this is home sweet home as well, is it? This is. This is the shop and home combined. In an area measuring just 400 square feet, Sarah's managed to cleverly create a charming live workspace. This is uh, a very cute and very beautiful bookshop. Thank you. It's packed with so much character. With the boat already in good condition, Sarah spent just £1,000 on second-hand furniture, timber for sleeping pods, and lots of multifunctional storage solutions. Everything has a double purpose, really, especially in this 
table, which doubles up as, as a bookcase, a display table. And then we hide our, um, like, cooking stuff underneath here as well. That's a clever... And they're made from um, a friend's staircase, actually. These are stair treads. You've made a table out of a friend's staircase. <laughs> yeah. With space at a premium, this barge is a lesson in putting every fixture to work. Even Sarah's bunk beds double up as reading pods for customers. The thought that someone's come into here, bought a book, and they sit on the beds and read stories. It's really beautiful. And these must have cost nothing. nothing. It's basically just chipboard, it's OSB. Over the last six years, Sarah's worked hard to make every part of her board streamlined and simple, with one exception. So how do I get into your loo? So if you just move the stairs up. Yeah, they go to there. And there's two catches on the door. One at the, one top. At the top. One at the side. Yeah. And it sort of cantilevers out. Well, that's good. All right, OK. And you have to it swing it there. around. And then the toilet bowl itself actually swings round. So there's no should... privacy, though. Well, I know, not, if, not I mean, if this is open, it has to, you can only... Yeah, yeah but, like, and the outside world's over there. Is, yeah, well, this... So, all this, right, so you close that, floor. close that, and close that. Yeah. God, you need to have, really need a wee. Would have been too late by then. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sarah is so brave to have made the massive lifestyle change that she made. And actually, the barge that she's built is really... Beautiful. It's hardly surprising that her floating bookshop is a bestseller.